you're on the Tudor Hotline with Melissa Maribel. How can I help you? Hi, this is Brittany, and my question today is in electrochemistry. For the voltaic cell, cadmium solid to cadmium 2 plus ion with a concentration of 0.1 molar in 25 mils, and the lead 2 plus ion at 2 molar, 25 mils to lead solid. A, what is E cell initially? E naught is 0.277 volts. B, if the cell is allowed to operate spontaneously, will E cell increase? decrease or remain constant with time, explain. C, what will be E cell when the lead two plus ion concentration has fallen to 0.9 molar? Hint, both concentrations change, why? And D, what will be the cadmium two plus ion concentration at the point when E cell equals 0.254 volts? Let's go over that. All right, so we have multiple parts to this question, but the main thing that we wanna focus on is just the fact that they do give us the cell notation, so this is gonna come in handy. We will have to identify what the overall balanced equation is since that will help us all throughout this question, so let's just start off with A. So with this cell notation, let's translate this. Remember with our cell notation, the anode is always on the left, and then the cathode is always on the right. So we know with our anode, that's where oxidation takes place. So I know cadmium is going to go from a solid to then its two plus ion state, and then the cathode is reduction. That's where reduction takes place. And we'll have lead in this case going from that two plus ion back to its solid state. So this is just how we kind of change this cell notation into an actual balanced equation. What I'm gonna do now is actually add everything together. So I'm gonna combine these two together, so these are our reactants, and combine the products together to give us our overall balanced equation, and this is what we would have. So this is gonna be really beneficial to us because there will be times where we need to figure out how many electrons are being transferred overall, which is actually part of this question. So what this question is asking is what is the cell notation? And specifically this is saying in non-standard conditions, since we don't have that little degree symbol, or in this case it's called E naught, right? This is telling us that that is the standard cell potential. So I'm given the standard cell potential. And in case you weren't given that, how you would find that is by using the overall cell potential of your cathode and subtracting it by the cell potential of your anode. And that gives you the overall cell potential of uh, the cell. So then since I have that information, what I need to do now is use the Nernst equation. So I'm going to use this equation. And my first step here is, well, since I have my standard cell potential, I need to figure out how many electrons are being transferred. That's what N refers to. So that's why I figured out the balanced equation here, because this tells me how many electrons are being transferred. If we were to look at oxidation numbers again, well, I know that anything in its solid state, so one element in its solid state, means that that just has an oxidation number of zero. And then anything that has a charge, one element with the charge, the charge is the oxidation number. So I know that this uh, plus two is the oxidation number. Once again, this is zero for a solid and plus two for anything that has a charge, since this is the actual charge, right? So how many electrons are being transferred here? Well, if I'm looking at this going from zero to two, or two to zero, well, I'm really transferring just two electrons. Same thing goes for cadmium, only two electrons. So I know that there are two electrons overall being transferred. So I'm gonna place that here in a second. So let's keep going. I have the electrons, I have the standard cell potential. What I need to find now is what Q is. Okay, so remember what Q is, it refers to the reaction quotient, and specifically when our uh, system or our equation or reaction is not at equilibrium. So we always want our products, the concentration of our products to be on top, and then uh, the concentration of our reactants to be on the bottom. And of course, remember with this, we never include any solids. It's only going to include the aqueous solutions. So how I'm gonna write this is I'm going to place my products on top, so the cadmium two plus, and then my reactants on the bottom, so the lead two plus on the bottom. We need to find our value for Q, and we are given our concentrations of uh, each one, so we're given the concentration of cadmium, which I'm gonna place on top, and then I'm gonna place the concentration of our lead, which is two, divide those two values, and Q is then equal to 0.05. So now that we have Q, I'm now gonna plug everything into this formula and then solve for our non-standard cell potential. 
So I plugged everything in so far. The first thing I wanna do is just uh, place log of this value into my calculator. When we do that, we get this value. From there, what I, the next step that I want you to do is simply divide these two values together. So when we do that, we get this. Now I'm gonna multiply these two values together. And then of course, subtract and finally, our E of our cell is then 0.315 volts. Now let's go on to part B. Okay, so for part B, it's asking, if the cell is allowed to operate spontaneously, will E of the cell increase, decrease, or remain constant with time? Explain. All right, so one thing to look at is just the value of E of cell that we just got. So we found that this was our E of the cell and it was positive. That's really important to note that it is positive. The reason for that is because, well, I know that if it's positive, that means it's spontaneous. And even though, even though that this, you know, does tell me it is going to um, operate spontaneously, if it didn't tell you that and you saw that E of cell is positive, you know it's going to be spontaneous. If E of your cell is negative, then it's non-spontaneous. But in this case, because it is positive, I know it's gonna keep going. And I want you to think of this specifically of our uh, reaction quotient. That's gonna help us identify whether E of cell is going to increase, decrease, or remain constant. If our reaction continues and it progresses, then that means the concentration of our reactants is going to decrease because it's being used up. And then our products, our concentration of our products are then going to increase because I want you to think of it this way. If it's moving spontaneously, that means that our reactants are turning into the products, right? So that's why our reactants are being consumed and then our products are being produced. So what's actually happening is this increases the value of Q and then it decreases the E of our cell or the cell potential overall. So in this case, it's actually going to decrease. So whenever we're increasing our Q, we're decreasing E of cell and then vice versa. If it's decreasing our Q, we're increasing the E of our cell. Now for part C. This is asking what will be the E of the cell when the concentration of lead 2 plus has fallen to 0 0.9 uh, molarity. And it does tell us a hint that both concentrations will change. And the reason for that, by the way, is this goes back to the idea of if this if this reaction is continuing on, well, the reactants are being consumed and the products are being produced. Well, if we change the amount of, you know, of any of the concentrations really, then the other is going to also change. Like if we were to decrease the amount of reactants, that means we're also changing the amount of products that's going to be made or vice versa for increasing the amount of products you know that also changes the amount of reactants we must have started with so essentially the concept here is the number of moles that are consumed at the cathode is then equal to the number of moles generated by the anode so this is another concept that i want you to kind of look at this since it is going to balance each other out and it, it still has to keep progressing with our reaction so this is basically the reason why we have to change both of our concentrations there's another way to also look at this and actually mathematically figure out what's going to happen. So this is kind of like an ice table, but it's not an ice table, okay? I know most people don't like ice tables and I don't blame you, but this is not an ice table. It's kind of an, a glimpse of one or a type of one. But with our ice table, remember, we, we're not gonna worry about the solids in this case. We're only looking at uh, the aqueous ions. I'm gonna start off with the initial concentration that's given, so two. And then I'm also gonna place uh, cadmium. So we also were initially given the concentration of cadmium. Now, the change here is, remember this is still kind of similar to an ice table where our reactants are going to have, uh, we're gonna subtract X and then our products we're going to add X. So that's what I'm gonna see here. Now we can actually figure out the change. And the reason why we can figure out the change is because we know what the final concentration of of lead uh, two plus is going to be since that's provided. So since I know this amount, I can then just put this all together and solve for X. So that's what I'm gonna do. Placing this in an equation, I'll do two minus X equals that 0 0.9. And then I'll subtract over that two on either side. And then I'm going to get a positive value. And this is what my actual change will be. So now that I know what X is, I'm actually going to plug that in here and then figure out what the final concentration of cadmium would then be. Okay, so I plug this in, plug this in here for X. Now I'm just going to add these two together. So I'll get 1.2. 
And this just tells me I have, okay, I know the concentration for lead that's provided. I now know what's going to change uh, the other concentration that changes, which is 1.2 for cadmium. And then now I have to redo the E of the cell since I have to figure that out using the Nertz equation. So everything that we just did was just to help us figure out what the value of Q was since Q does deal with concentration. So that's what I want to look at now is just looking at, okay, what's going to be my new Q value? So let's plug everything into Q. Remember that it's still the same thing. It's still going to be our products over our reactants. And then on top is going to be that 1.2 that we just found and the 0.9 that was provided. When we divide these two values, we get this is our Q, so 1.33 is our Q. Now I'm gonna plug this into the Nertz equation, and the only thing that changed was Q since the amount of electrons still remains the same. It's still two electrons that are being transferred. All right, so we'll plug everything in. We were given this in part A, right, that, that uh, standard cell potential, and then I'm just gonna do the math again that we did previously, and when I do that, this is the E of the cell when the lead has fallen to this concentration. And finally, Part D. So part D is saying, what will the concentration of cadmium 2 plus be at the point when we have our E of our cell equal to this amount of volts? So we're working our way a little bit backwards this time where we want to figure out the concentration of cadmium, and this time we are given the non-standard cell potential. So what I'm going to do, still using the Nertz equation, I'm going to, one, I, I was given that standard cell potential in part A, so I do plug that in. Uh, Q is going to change, and then E of the cell was also given, so I'm gonna plug that in. So I'm gonna write Q a little bit differently. So this is what we said Q was. So we have two unknowns at this point. We don't know the concentration of cadmium, nor do we know the concentration of lead. I'm gonna bring back that kind of similar ice table, not an ice table, but still kind of similar. I'm gonna bring that back just to help us figure out what this could look like. So since we know the concentration initially of lead and the concentration of cadmium initially, well, I can still talk about the change, but this time I don't know what the actual change is. And we're going to write this a little bit differently where I would still add these two together, so two minus x, and I would add these two together. So when I do that, this is my final concentration at the moment. It's just going to be an equation and that's gonna help us figure out what x is, which then could help us find the overall concentration of cadmium. So I know that, okay, well, um, this is going to be my concentration for lead, this is my concentration for cadmium, and I'm just gonna plug that in for each. So when I do that, I get uh, this. So what I wanna do right now is to do all this math here and then find a way to just get down to this, right, we want the x, we wanna solve for x. So just try to get down to this point. So what I'm gonna do first, let's do this together. What I'm gonna do first is just divide these two values, and that's what I get here. Next, I wanna subtract uh, these two values together. And when I do that, I get this value. Next, I want to then divide this entire value. So I'm gonna show that, let me show you that step. So I'm gonna divide this entire value by negative 0.0296. I'm gonna do the same thing on the either side. So negative 0.0296, and then I'll get uh, this next part. Okay, so when I divide these two values, I then get that 0.77. And beware of this step, we do have log. What we have to do now is take the anti-log or the second log on your calculator. Um, so this is really just changing this to a base of 10. It's 10 raised to this ex new exponent. And when I do, when I do this step, the whole point of this is just to cancel out log and really that 10, it's just to cancel out the log. So when I do second log on my calculator or even just showing it this way, this is what I have so far. I now finally have some way to solve for x. Now I'm gonna find the actual value for this. Okay, so when I figure out uh, what this is, so remember this is on your calculator, it's just second log and then you'll place uh, 0 0.777 in your calculator and we'll get this value. So next, what I want to do is get rid of this denominator by multiplying the denominator to both sides. This will cancel out the denominators. And then now I want to distribute this all in. So it's going to look like this. Okay, so like I said, we'll distribute these in, multiply everything, and we'll get this. And from here, we're just combining like terms and solving for x. So first things first, I'm going to add both sides by this value. So combining the x's together, when we do that, we get this. And then from here, I just wanna combine these two numbers together, so I'll subtract this over. 
Subtracting those two values, we'll get this value now. And then of course, we're going to divide both sides by that 6.98. And when we do this, we get, we solve for our x. So we found our change. We didn't find the overall concentration of cadmium just yet, right? So this is just the change. Don't, don't assume that this is, we're done, you know, that this is the concentration that they're asking for. That would be wrong. Instead, we're going to take this a little bit further and see, okay, well, we're not done just yet. I know that uh, for our final change of cadmium, I have that 0 0.100 plus x. And that's what we had here, right, on the top. That's what we found with our little ice table or similar ice table. Well, all I have to do now is just add the change to it since uh, that's what we're looking for. So this is 0 0.100 plus that 1.70. And then this is just going to give us uh, 1.800. And that's our new concentration for cadmium. And that's our final answer. Okay, so it's 1.800. Uh, 1.800, that's our concentration overall. So I hope that cleared up some confusion and it now makes a lot more sense with electrochemistry. And if you'd like to get your question answered, just like Brittany did, all you have to do is look in the description box. There is a link and you submit a question. It is seriously that easy. Make sure to do that and I'll see you in my next video.